Hello, my name is Jim Taylor, and I'd like to welcome you to Cedar Crest Trout Farm. The farm was built 14 years ago. Uh, originally, I got involved in fish farming with a farm in 1969, so I've been in this business for 40 years. It took us eight years to get the permits for this place. From the time we built 14 years ago, this has become the largest land-based trout farm in Ontario, probably the second or third largest in Canada. We employ three people full-time, plus myself. We sell fish for human consumption, 11 ounce up to two pounds. We also uh, supply a lot of fingerlings, four to five to six inch, up to Manitoulin Island to the cages. At any one time, we'll have over a million fish on the farm. A lot of people think that fish farming is just a matter of having a few ponds, put the fish in, throw a bit of feed in. The only pond I have is the manure pond. Trying to explain it to people is difficult, but you need to see it for yourself to understand it. With fish farming, uh, we control all the elements of, for the animal. We have to make sure that they're not too crowded, that they have enough water, they have enough feed, they have enough oxygen. It seems that we're constantly moving fish around to stay within these parameters. We have to make sure that we keep our water quality up. It is a time consuming job. There are parts of the farm that would be dead in 20 minutes without hydro or water. It's a 24 seven job. Okay, this is our main water source. It's Camp Creek, one of the best cool water streams in Ontario. Uh, we have a permit for 3,000 gallons of water a minute, which we take off the creek. Uh, we are actually then pumping water for some of our other facilities, we have more water leaving the farm than what comes in. The fish farm is laid out in three basic areas. We have the coverall, which has uh, a deep well supplying 150 gallons of fresh water a minute. Uh, in that building, we can have, uh, we run about 25,000 fish per trough when we're full. We've got 20 troughs, we'll have half a million fish swimming in the troughs here at any one time. From there, the fish go up to the house. We have raceways in the bottom of the house in the basement. There's eight raceways, and we will hold for about 400,000 up there at a time normally. From there, they come out to the general growing area where they're growing up either for fingerlings to be shipped up to the uh, cages around Manitoulin Island, or we grow them up to uh, human consumption size, which is anywhere from 11 ounces to uh, four pounds. Cedar Crest have their own brood stock. We are unique in that we have brood stock, which we start to spawn in August. Uh, we spawn once a week through the fall with our fall spawners. We have winter spawners. We also have spring spawners. And we usually end up doing our last spawning the end of May. Uh, What's happening is that we're here is that we take the fish, we put them in an anesthetic, uh, they go to sleep, we pick up the females, uh, squeeze them gently. If the eggs are ripe, they'll start to flow. We'll then collect those in a margarine container. After we have about six margarine containers full, we'll take a couple males, we'll add the sperm to them, we'll mix, gently mix the sperm in with the eggs. Uh, from there, the eggs are taken and water hardened any uh, dead egg shells or foreign materials removed and then they are set in the incubators where they will stay until they're eyed up which is about 26 days. These are the little fish they were uh, spawned on October the 10th it's now December the 7th so they're about a month and a half old they would have uh, came out of the fish as an egg on October the 20th they've been in the incubator for about a month and a half now. Uh, all I'm doing here is separating them from the eggs that didn't hatch. Uh, we put them in the trough. They'll spend about a week in the trough lying on bottom uh, and they'll absorb their yolk sac and then they'll be up and swimming and feeding in about a week, week and a half time. This is the actually the basement of my house. Uh, it contains eight raceways for small fish. 
We bring them up from the coverall and they're grown here till they're two to three inches in size, at which time they're transferred outside into the outside raceways. These are the grater bars we use to uh, separate the fish. Uh, for example, this is a one inch grater bar. This is, I have spacing, this has an inch and an eighth. We'll push down the raceway with this grater bar first, then this will follow up with this one. The small fish swim through, the bigger ones are kept behind, and we have the proper size of fish in between that we want. We have these up to two inches in size and one eighth inch. Okay, for fish delivery, this is a setup we use. A lot of people come in, they want to take their own fish home. We put this in the, back, the tank in the back of a pickup truck, complete with a battery. There's an aerator built right into it, and they load their fish up, put them on, uh, take them home, drop them in the pond, bring the uh, tanks back. For larger deliveries like Monday, we'll be using this tank. It'll, it carries a thousand pounds live. <coughs> I have taken fish a thousand pounds as far as Bancroft from here. Then for the <coughs> all the quantities of fingerlings that we ship up to Manitoulin Island, we use this truck here. It's pulled by a tractor. Uh, depending on the size of fish, we can take 25,000 at a time, 50,000 at a time up to the island. So, and uh, it's not set up right now, but there's oxygen bottles on there, an air system on there uh, to uh, turn the water over and keep the fish alive. Okay, we're collecting all the manure from the various parts of the fish farm, the, uh, the coverall, the fish farm itself, the basement, all the water flows into this pond. There it's manure settles out. We also, especially in the springtime, we have a lot of sediment to remove that has come in from the creek and it's in the fish pond. Once things settle and we pump the water up to the front field, what is left, about every four years, we have to have the big trucks come in and they agitate the pond and completely empty the pond of all, all solids. To feed our fish, we use these, what they call a demand feeder. The feed is poured in here, then the little fish come up, they grab the, hit the wire, and you can see the feed dropping down. So. They can feed themselves as much as they want or as little as they want. I've been involved in this business for 40 years now and I, and I still love it.